it looked good in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like I said, man, this this was a wing clinic. You know, OG, I thought OG set a good tone. He was in his shot creation bag. Knicks were getting after it defensively, tur turning defense into offense. Mikal Bridges looked good. He loves that fadeaway baseline jumper. You saw Josh Hart doing Josh Hart things, grabbing, snatching boards. He would still finish with a double-double despite having lost him in this game, which we'll get into. And so coming out of the, into the third quarter, you felt good about it until the Cleveland Cavaliers, who coming into this game were one of the better second-half teams in the league, kind of showed why, man. You know, may, is this a different defensive team now? We'll see. But I thought uh, the Knicks were mindful. You know, maybe afraid might be a big word, uh, too big of a term, but I thought they were mindful of Evan Mobley the entire night. I thought he did a solid job defensively. Jared Allen as well. On the other end, the Knicks had no answers for Darius Garland. I, I was fearful up that matchup tonight. I thought Garland was going to have his way with the Knicks tonight, and, and he did. It just wasn't crisp, man. Well, it wasn't crisp in, in crunch time. Yeah, you definitely want to see that two-man game. It's supposed to be lethal. You want to see the pick and roll with Brunson and Cat. You want to see the pick and pop. You want to see that there's just, there's just a multitude of options. We were talking about it last night on Knicks Weekly, right, CP? Both guys can attack the lane. Both guys can shoot. You want to see that versatility between both of them. That's why you got Cat. You talked about you wanted to space the floor. Well, didn't really space the four tonight, all right? And I don't know if you saw this by Tommy Beer, man, mm -hmm. uh, if you have the stat pulled up. Uh, yeah. But Tommy Beer tweeted, Cat uh, is averaging just 9.3 field goal attempts per game through three contests this season. Per basketball reference, it's the first time in more than six years Towns has attempted fewer than 12 field goals in three straight games, January of 2018. So you got this guy to be an offensive threat, but yet he is not heavily involved in in the offense and look i get it you have him you have brunson you got bridges there's a lot of guys there's a lot of mouths to feed offensively yeah i get it but you brought him in here to be that second dude like you brought him in here because he could put the ball in the hoop and he's you know as he claimed himself one of the best shooting bigs in the nba but we haven't really unlocked that yet and i i still want to i want to see that like that's why you have him here and while I understand this is Brunson's team, I understand you want to give Brunson all the looks possible because he is the captain and so forth. Just because he's the captain, he's been here, we got to find rhythm. We got to make sure guys stay involved no matter what quarter is in. And even for tonight, Brunson was struggling. Like, let's give it a beat. From the jump, this guy yeah. was not in his bag. It took him some time to find the range to attack. And through the middle of the game, you know, he started to figure it out. But then fourth quarter, we can't just have nine shots from Brunson and only three shots for Cat. That's insane, dude. Like, that is absolutely insane. Yeah. So Tibbs has got to figure that out and make sure Cat gets involved because, look, even from three, right? Let's, let's look at this game as a whole. If you look at it through all four quarters, Cat only attempted two shots from downtown. That's, in my opinion, unacceptable because this guy is supposed to space the four for you, make it ten times easier for guys like Brunson, yeah. Hart, OG, and Bridges to really attack the lane. And we're not doing that. Like, Cat only went one for two from three. And while that the percentage is good, we're supposed to be a high-volume three-point shooting team. And we only took 28 shots. I'm not expecting us to be the Cat, uh, the Celtics and shoot 60, but he has put up 36 shots from downtown tonight. Knicks only put up, mustered up 28. Like, it should be much more, especially when you have Cat who could shoot the three and who could shoot from damn near the logo. So like, yeah. what are we doing and why aren't we optimizing that in this game from the jump? Like gotta yeah. be, gotta open up the playbook a little more yeah. early on the season. What was not so good was Josh Hart out. Josh Hart, who was questionable in this game with the, with a ankle impingement. Usually you hear about shoulder impingement, but now he's, he's got an ankle impingement played and got on his Dennis Rodman game, just just ripping down re rebounds left and right. But then it got ugly in the second half, man. He uh he got slammed on his side on a George's Niang foul, hard foul, and then he got kicked. He didn't get kicked, but it uh, Karis Levert's knee ran yep. right into his ankle, full speed. And so I don't know if it's a contusion or what. But you can expect Josh Hart is going to miss some time. Unfortunate, man. He he played very well tonight. Best player it's in the court tonight. 
It's crazy, CP. And I mean, we can still talk about the storyline of Huck Porty tonight. It's crazy how storylines just change, you know, by quarters at this point. So Josh Hart, the utility man, you talked about him being on his Dennis Rodman game. Look, man, tonight he had 16 points, 13 rebounds, three steals, two assists. He went six of six from the free throw line. This guy was doing everything. He even went two of five from downtown CP. Yeah. This guy was in his bag. And to see him get injured when he was questionable for this game, of course, he's going to miss some time. It's going to hurt too. Because when you think about rebounding, like just like we don't have Mitch. You don't got Precious. Yeah. And Cat, who had 10 boards, was out rebounded by Josh Hart. Now, this is not, this is not. Slight to cat. This is just telling you how important Josh Hart is as a rebounder for this team. Yeah. Um, 13 boards. Who is going to replicate that when he misses some time? And I want to just talk about, I think it was either the first or second quarter. I think it was the first quarter where it was a slow start. And you just see the, you know, I was actually happy to see the multiple offensive boards for second chance opportunities. You see Jericho Sims get a board, you know, kick it back out. I forget who misses the shot. Josh Hart. Jumps out of bounds, saves it, gets it to Bridges, and then you see Bridges with the easy layup. Yeah. And it's stuff like that. Like, who is going to replicate that if he misses some time? That is, you know, the dirty work always goes overlooked because I know that it's an offensive game. Scoring is very pretty. It's even it's easy to gravitate towards, but who is going to replicate Josh Hart? I know there's nothing official yet, but you saw him wimping off the court. This is a guy that you have to protect. For the long haul of the season, yeah, you don't want to risk anything because this guy is so valuable because he does all the dirty work because of the energy that he does bring on the court. So he, you got to rest him at this point. Who's the next guy to step up with him missing some time? Huckamania. Maybe that is the best news of the night for the Huck Hive, the, for the Huck Porty Hive, because Jericho Sims did get the, the, the first shot at the back of five. But then Huck Port in the beginning of the game. But then Huck Porty comes in in the second quarter for an extended amount of time. Third quarter into the fourth, he becomes the f- third quarter. He becomes the first player off the bench. Period, and then assumes that backup five role for the rest of the game. That could be a revelation in the uh, in the Knicks front court in, in the in the st- in the center rotation. I think Huck Porty might have surpassed him tonight, man. It's so crazy, man, how it's like we were talking to who is it? I forget who submitted the question last night while we had Stevie on the show. When is Colic going to get into the star rotation? Yeah. Well, you may be asking about Colic, but Huck Porty decided to say, you know what, Sims, I'm going to take your job. Yeah. Not later. Now. Yeah. All right. And it, that was the, that is the fastest change I've ever seen, because remember, Evan Fournier was given a lot of rope. Right before Quentin Grimes took over, and to see Huck Porty get not one, not two, not four minutes in the second quarter, CP seven minutes straight yep. as the starting big or the backup big, I should say, the backup big, and that to me, you know, you see that McBride clip after during the Pacers game in the fourth quarter where he says, Schooling "Yo, him. these minutes are important, man. These minor minutes. This is how he earns you. This is how you earn his trust." Well, one game is all it took for you know. Huck Poirier to earn all of Tibbs' trust because that was the he got 12 minutes tonight. He got 12 minutes tonight of being the big, of the backup big. And in my opinion, I thought he did a solid job, man. I think he's active. I think he hustles. I like how he's, you know, he's able to position himself, you know, just whether it's defending, whether it's guarding somebody, or even just boxing somebody out. He does a lot of the little things right that you see that Sims, who's been on this team for quite some time now, has difficulty doing. And you got to give credit to Huck Porty for putting the work in and looking solid right now. I'm not saying that, you know, he's going to be like the yeah. next Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or whatever, but, you know, or even uh, Mat- uh, Kevin Matumbo over here. But this guy has shown enough where he's going to be a solid backup big. And moving forward, I like what he's shown so far. And I think it's a good move because you want somebody who understands the boxing out, the defensive assignment, how to just switch, maneuver, He's doing that much better than Sims, and so you got to you got to go with guys that you trust at this point. Right, let's hear what Tibbs had to say on the Huck Porty assignment. This is uh, backstage next press conference. Let's see how the audio is. Hopefully, it's good. Here we go. So I'm from a lot of Ariel today. Everything okay with Jericho? Yeah, yeah. Just you know, getting a look at someone different to try to change it up. You know, 
bears because I'm really my bear. The bigs are pretty dynamic, so you know we wanted to see what it looked like. What did you, what did you make of how he went? Good, gave. I thought his minutes were solid. Cody Glock, ladies and gentlemen, close us out tonight, man. My bad, my bad, man. Oh. Yo, shout out, shout out, DraftKings, man. Yeah. I average zero turnovers with DraftKings, man. I take care of the ball profusely with the utmost perfection in my yeah, mission. I take care of my picks, as you say. No testimonials, church preach, tabernacle. Mm-hmm. Man, mm-hmm. let me start this off straight. Listen, let me tell you something about Mitchie. You see Mitchie? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I bet y'all miss Mitchie now. How you bring Mitchie huh? into this, man? <laughs> no, no, let me let me finish. Let me let me get my oh let me my get God. my shot off. Oh Look, God. y'all forgot Mitchie put both Cavs big men in his pocket, didn't we? we how, how we forget, yeah. right? Yeah, they, they, see, it seemed like they came in with revenge tonight, man, because of what Mitchie did in the past, man. I think they were a little they were and a little especially snake especially Evan Mobley cooking cat just just cooking cat like a premium i don't want to say you you know because it's a lot of political stuff with cooking cats going on around here but yo man <laughs> cook cat. just cook them and, and i'm not mad you feel me i'm not as mad as i thought i would be let me say that with the loss because yeah. i see elite defense and us going up 13 we still you know playing our worst basketball so everyone yeah. calm down on that standpoint, you feel me? Because we still, like the other caller said, we're not a well-oiled machine yet. Yeah. But we we know who the guys are going to show up for us on the scoring side. Mm-hmm. We know who those guys will be. But it's the start of the season. I would like to see more Tyler Kolick and some Dottie action in these situations, man. Okay. Because let's be honest, campaign, all right, he's been playing defense and making an effort. I like it. But Tyler Kolick is a natural initiator. A player like him would have helped us today. Believe it or not, he would have helped us today. Mm. I don't like how they sold Huck Porty out of that dunk on Evan Mobley, too. Yeah, I'm uh, loving yeah. The he, they, they, the they ruined his garden yeah. moment, man. They ruined his garden moment tonight, yeah. man. Come on, like ref. Sometimes refs just gotta stand out the way on a highlight yeah. play, man. Yeah. Like, come on, bro. You yeah. you see, he's already intimidating the opposing players. He has to learn when to jump and when to just intimidate. But he's already inching the simulation out of the rotation because Jericho Sims, you 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 the little thun. You a good athletic five. You're just not cut for New York, man. You're not cut for the New York Knicks. Mm. Not enough ferocity. You play too light skin. I'm sorry. <laughs> you feel me? I'm just sorry. Just nonchalant like a like a light skin. Come on, I'm all right. But M- Macau Bridges fall away, Mitty, is making me proud as hell. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't I didn't like that no. they went away from him, man. I, I, I want to see my guy Bridges going in, man. Me too, man. He's going to keep on balling. I see the consistency in that fall away, and yeah. I like how it's coming to him. You know, he's just, he's not going to, like, going to grab it. He's It's coming to him, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's going to be kept up. OG needs to get it together offensively, but I'm not worried. We're getting dinged up. I seen Josh come out the game, and you know if he comes out there, something, something just ain't right. But let me yeah. let me make this one last point, right? Yeah. Let me right. make this one last point. If we got Jalen Brunson at the line, right, and it's a fourth quarter close game, mm-hmm. can the people at MSG just wait till he makes the free throw to cheer him on and encourage him? He's about to shoot a free throw. And I hear a kid all the way from the TV screen shouting, MVP, MVP. <laughs> like, yo, the, the MVP chant, the guy before he gets his routine going, somebody shut that kid the hell up. <laughs> Let the man concentrate. The clock's I'm tired of today. this guy missing free throws, man. You're our captain. You're the point guard. And I expect free throws to go down at least. Mm. It's pissing me off. Mm. JB, get it together, man. Let's go. Yo, shout out Nikki Pipes, man. Yeah, shout out to Nikki, man. Shout, shout out, out CP him. Free Throws, man. Yeah. Shout out Alex, man. Okay. Shout out all my Yankee fans. Hold your head, man. I'm getting. Shout out, shout out Takamichi mm. Noku. Shout out, no, oh, shout man. out DJ Clark Kent, man. Yeah, shout, shout out, shout out Clark DJ Kent, Clark Kent. Brooklyn's finest, sky's the limit, realms, players, anthem, rest in mm. power to the legend, man. I'm out, man. There you go.